y'all. Welcome back to Conversations with Carrie. So good to have you here. If you have not already, please make sure you subscribe, turn on your notifications, all that kind of jazz. Because listen, I'm trying to bring the word and a few book reviews, but I haven't read a book in a while. But anyway, listen, if you want that word, go ahead and subscribe to Conversations with Carrie. Okay? Um, really excited to come to y'all today. As you see, um, I'm in a different place. I'm at my parents' house in Texas, and y'all just got lit up by mosquitoes. Like, literally just got lit up. So, anyway, <laughs> I need the Lord extra right now. It's like they love all this chocolate. What can I say? Um, but today, I am coming to you to talk about David. Y'all know, I think my last video, I was talking about how much I love David. I love me some David. There's so many lessons there. But I'm taking it, I'm taking it back a little bit. I'm taking it back to a lesson that I think all of us learned as kids. If you grew up in Sunday school, because me and my family were professional churchgoers. Yes, we had Sunday school, which was before the actual Sunday service. So, yeah, we was in church all day. Um, but going back to David and Goliath. Oh, I love this story because there's so much here. And I was thinking about how when I read it as a kid, it was all about, you know, David and Goliath, this big giant, this like young shepherd boy. But as I read it with grown eyes, adult eyes, when you've been through some things and you've had some giants in your life, I want to come to you and discuss the five smooth stones. And I wrote about this on my blog, carrylee.com. But I thought, you know, for some of y'all, we, we like to have the conversation. Someone come on here and have the conversation. And this is taking place in 1 Samuel. It's 1 Samuel 16 and 17 kind of tells the full story. But I really want to talk about really the uh, how David defeated Goliath. And again, we all know, you know, he used a slingshot and Goliath with this huge um, giant... But what I want to talk to you today is about a couple things. One, I want to talk about Goliath, his role as a giant, and how the, how the Israelite army was so afraid of him. And as I think about this, again, from adult eyes, I kind of get it. I get what the Israelite army was facing. Like, here is this huge giant who comes every day and every night for 40 days. And 40 nights. And let's be very clear, when we're facing giants from the enemy, don't they seem to taunt us day and night? Like when you first thing you wake up in the morning, you're thinking, oh, I slept so good. And the enemy will be like, boom, you know you got that big meeting today. You're not going to do well. Boom. You know you go into that job that you hate. You're never going to get a new job. You're never going to do anything better. Boom. Here's another day that you're single and you out here waiting on your husband or waiting on your wife. I mean, it's like he will just taunt as soon as you wake up. And for those of you who are like, okay, no, I'm normally good in the morning, but it's in the evening when I want to wind down and I want to rest. And the first thing he says is, oh, why don't you go ahead and smoke that? Why don't you have, go ahead and drink that? You know you're around here depressed anyway. Or you know what? You are just so sad. Nobody loves you. You don't have any friends. You know, he'll try to take every small thing and blow it up to make it become this giant in our life. And here we go, morning and night, we're being taunted on a regular basis from the enemy. And so I get why the Israelite army ran and fled because to them, they're like, oh my gosh, this, this huge giant giant that we can't defeat. Here and here he is out here dressed in bronze armor for head to toe, incredibly menacing and incredibly scary. And they probably trembled in fear on a regular basis. And when we're facing our giants, that's what we do sometimes. But I love David. I love the story of David because here comes this young kid on the scene delivering some loaves and some cheese to his brothers and to tell his daddy, they're like, yeah, the brothers are doing well. And, you know, he's out there and he hears a Goliath come with these empty threats. And he's like, what y'all running for? Like, <laughs> who, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Which, come on with the diss, David. You know, I've been like, who is this? Uh, funny looking, you know, whatever we would say for today, I, I'm going to keep it holy and not say what I probably used to say. Um, but I love that David was like, who is this? Oh, let me tell you about my guy. Let me, I'm about to defeat you right here, right now. Let me show you how I do. You come to me with swords, but I come to you with the word of God. And that's just it. And it says that David, when he went to go gather his, um, you know, to go to meet Goliath, he gathered five smooth stones. You know what? We have these giants in our life and we can gather our own five smooth stones that are grounded in the word of God to defeat that giant. Because let's keep in mind, it only took one shot. It only took one stone to defeat uh, Goliath. You know, as the Israel, Israelite army is running and they're scared and they're thinking like, oh my gosh, how are we ever going to defeat this? 
it took one stone. So let's talk about what those five stones could be because this has really blessed me and I'm going to look at some of my notes so you're going to see me looking down. But David was such an example of, he, of what he said of like, how do we defeat our enemy? So I imagine as he was picking up his stones, he was like, okay, first I'm going to pick up faith. Because I believe that God is who he says he is and nothing can separate us from, the, from his love. And keep in mind, David had already been anointed. He was like, I'm here to do great things. So no, I'm picking up my stone of faith per first, put it in his pouch. And then he had evidence. Saul came to David and was like, young boy, how are you going to defeat this giant? He's been a warrior since his youth. And David was like, oh, no, I got evidence. Because when I was out there protecting the sheep, Oh, yeah, the Lord caused me to defeat a, a lion and a bear and protecting me from their paws. So, no, I can defeat this giant. I've already defeated uh, the enemy before. I can do it again. So we have to have that stone of evidence. Again, pick that up, put it in your pouch. And then courage. I love this one because when you think about that, I was reading the Bible and um, it says that Goliath was actually only like like nine foot, nine feet, nine inches tall or something like that. So really the only person who was actually capable or even well suited to defeat Goliath was actually King Saul. Because Saul, they said he should uh, stood head and shoulders above everybody else. So he was the tallest. He was also the king. He was also in charge. So he could have gone and actually defeated Goliath. But you know what? No. Instead, David was like, I got this. And he didn't bother trying to put on the doubt that his brother had um, talked to him about. He didn't try to put on Saul's armor. He was like, no, I'm going to put on the courage because it's not by strength and it's not by might, but it is by the Holy Spirit that we can defeat our enemies. Okay. We can't do it in our own strength, but we can go with the courage of the Lord who is with us to defeat any enemy. So again, that, that courage stone, put it in your pouch. And then confidence. You know what? I consider myself a confident person, but that's not because of my own making. It's because I know who I am in Christ. And again, he didn't let the fear that he was seeing from everyone else. He didn't try to be like everyone else. He was like, you know what? I'm confident in being set apart. I'm confident in being different. And I'm confident in being who God has created me to be. So I'm going to go in, in faith of my confidence that comes from the Lord. And I'm going to defeat Goliath. So again, confidence, put it in your pouch. And then last, I would say the fifth stone is worship. David was a worshiper and he understood the power of worship. He was already um, called to uh, soothe King Saul when he was, had an evil spirit come on him. David was sent to play music for King Saul to soothe him and so the evil spirit will, will leave him. So David knew the power of worship. And sometimes you have to know, to know, to know. Even I don't care if you can make a joyful noise unto the Lord, singing and sounding the mess, but there is power in your worship. There is power in your praise. So come on and pick up your stone of worship and put it in your pouch. And again, it only took one stone. So as you think about the different giants you, you're facing in your life, and they seem like a giant to you, I don't want to downplay that because I know what it's like to face some things. Listen, your girl is single and been wanting a husband for a while, but that's all right because I know that I can pull out I can pull out my stone of faith and be like, Lord, I know who you are. He who promised is faithful. So I know that you're going to do what you said you were going to do. You have put this desire in me for a reason. So I'm going to, I'm going to sling my, my, my stone of faith at that giant and know they can be defeated. And some of you are dealing with the giant of a negative doctor's report. I get it, but the Lord has kept you. So therefore, pull out your, your stone of evidence and sling that bad boy and say, the Lord has not only kept me healthy, he's kept me alive during a national pandemic where people are still out here dying from it. So let's be clear. You can defeat that giant, that, that giant of health issues because he's done it before. He'll do it again. And maybe some of you are feeling like, you know what, I got a giant of feeling like solitude or loneliness, or I have a giant of feeling like I'm, I'm missing out on what everyone else has going on. No, honey, pull out your stone of courage to know that you were set apart for a reason. Pull out your stone of confidence to know that the Lord has made you as you are for a reason. And you don't have to be like everybody else because there's only one you. So you can walk with your head high knowing that you are loved by the Almighty and sling that stone of confidence, honey, and knock down that giant. And I also, some of you are dealing with a giant of depression. You feel like there's just a darkness over you and you cannot see your way out. 
Honey, pull out the stone of worship and worship your way out. Let me tell you, turn on um, one of my favorite stations is Pandora, John P. Key, um, or turn on some Elevation Worship or Maverick City. I mean, there's so much to choose from and sing your heart out. You may not have that kind of voice. Um, what, what, worship? Um, do whatever you need to do and get your worship out there because that will lift that spirit of heaviness. That will bring the sunshine, and I do mean S O N, shine into your life so that you can know that I don't have to uh, wade in this darkness. No, I can sling that shot of uh, worship and know that I'm coming out of this. Listen, it only takes five smooth stones, but only one. You only have to sling one to defeat that enemy. It's not as big as you think. And again, I don't want to downplay it. You have been given the tools to overcome by the word of God, okay? Your stones are in here. It's all rooted in the word. And the enemy cannot defeat this word. I'm telling you. So you you are a David. You are someone, whether you're new or young in Christ, or you are mature and you've been doing this thing for a while. Either way it goes, you sling your shots of faith and courage and confidence and evidence and worship and watch those giants fall in your life. I promise you will defeat those giants. So quick and easy, y'all. Just want to come over here and give you a quick word. Thank you for tuning in to Conversations with Carrie. Make sure you like and subscribe. And then also check out CarrieLee.com. I got some more encouragement over there. Be blessed.